morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. I am Allison, the owner and hand dyer behind Lofty Loops Yarns. I am most active on Instagram as Lofty Loops, where you may have seen me before. And uh, this is my weekly podcast about knitting, some crochet, some cross stitching, some spinning, and pretty much anything else I can do that is crafty and any other rabbit holes that I may fall down in the crafting and hobby world. Um, that is where I shared that recently. It's been a bit of journaling as well, um, but the majority of my extra time goes to knitting. So you'll see a bunch of knitting today as well as uh, some hand-dyed yarn because I don't know if you can see, I am a yarn snob. Um, this shirt is from Shelly Can, and I will link her in the show notes, and um, it is just, it's fantastic. Uh, I've, I've purchased many things from her, so this shirt is speaking my language, so I love wearing it. Um, I love getting looks from people that don't quite understand what it means, <laughs> like yarn snob. Yep. Anyway, um... It is just after 9 a.m. and I believe it's going to be a scorcher today. I think the high is going to be 98 and we had overnight thunderstorms, which means it's going to be super humid on top of the 98 degrees. I live in Lincoln, Nebraska with my husband. We've been here almost our entire lives and we have two kiddos. One is going into high school, the other is going into middle school, so they are fully enjoying their summers off before they transition to new schools. And I have a dog who is a pug shih tzu mix, and he is a special kind of guy. I have photos of him on my Instagram, I believe, if you guys want to check him out. And I have a calico cat who is just the queen of the house. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I think we're going to jump right into um, Cal knit along news um, because I do have a knit along going on in the Ravelry group and I also wanted to mention about Ravelry that if you check me out on there I am the lofty loops I keep very detailed project notes for every project that I start every project that I'm hoping to start every project that I frog um, all of the notes yarn information needle size modifications blah 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 you name it it's all on my uh, Ravelry project page. So if there's ever anything that I might mention that you guys want to learn more about and um, I don't fully mention it or talk about it, you can definitely go check out Ravelry um, and all the info should be there for you. And um, speaking of Ravelry, I have a Ravelry group for my hand-dyed yarn company, Lofty Loops Yarns, as well as this podcast. So it's all encompassed into the one group. So you can find that by searching Lofty Loops Yarns in the groups tab. And of course, I'll link it down below and in the show notes. In that group, you will find show notes there. You will also find Cal stuff. You'll find yarn giveaways and other fun threads kind of getting to know each other. So definitely pop over and join that and see if there's anything in there that interests you. And right now we are running a Cal, which is the Summer Sock Club. And that Summer Sock Club is a group of patterns from Rye Flower Knits, who is Melinda. And I adore her patterns. I adore her. She's fantastic. Um, and when she decided to put out the Summer Sock Club, I really wanted to jump on board and just show my support for her and her lovely patterns. Also, I love knitting socks, so it seemed like a match made in heaven. Um, but it includes the Summer Sock Club is four patterns over the next four months, but then you also get a bonus pattern at the end. So for the price of the total club that you're purchasing through Ravelry, you get five total patterns. And right now in my Ravelry group and in her Ravelry group, there are chatter threads to chatter away as we knit on the first sock of the month, which is or the first sock of the first month of June. <laughs> uh, that is Scout. And there is definitely chatter threads for Scout in both of our groups, as well as finished object threads where you can post your finished socks and uh, be eligible for prizes. So there will definitely be random prize winnings going out in the chatter thread. So make sure you're in there and you're being active and you're chatting along with us because we're having a lot of fun. <clears throat> if you want to know what Scout looks like ahead of time, definitely check out the Whips and Wine podcast, which is a podcast hosted by Melinda. 
and uh, her friend, who, uh, Mallory, um, they are hysterical, but the last podcast that they filmed yesterday, the day before, uh, Melinda showed off her, like, knee-length socks, which are in the scout pattern, um, and they are just gorgeous, drop-dead gorgeous, so definitely give it a look, um, join us if you would like, I think, no, you can't buy the pattern separately, so if you want the pattern, you have to get the full club, um, at least until next year, which is fine, because they're all going to be great, and, um, who doesn't want to knit socks? Socks are perfect, uh, for on-the-go projects when you're, maybe you're in a car ride, um, going on vacation, maybe you're camping, maybe you are running your children to the umpteenth sports event over the summer. Maybe you're sitting by the pool with them. Maybe you're at the park. Um, socks are so portable, so they're definitely a great project just to kind of toss in your purse or toss in a bag and carry along. So I know I knit on socks most of the time um, because you always have to have a sock going. In the movies, I've finally graduated to being able to knit in the dark, <laughs> so I do quite a bit of sock knitting. Um, if I do go to the movies, I'm knitting on socks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Of a frog. Um, so I think that's all the cow news that I have for you. Definitely um, check out the Ravelry threads for more information and again it will all be linked below for you um, and I will show off my progress on Scout here in just a little bit. So I think, I think that's all I have for administrative news, um, Ravelry group news, things like that. So I definitely want to jump right into FOs. I don't have a full finished object this week, guys, but I do have a hoe, which is a half object for those that might be wondering um, or aren't up on the knitting lingo. But my half object that I have finished for you guys this week is my There Is Room For Everything socks. So this yarn is from Yarn Cafe Creations, and I have definitely told the story behind it. Um, in the past, on past episodes, so if you're into that, you can go find that. Um, but it is a gorgeous, woo, gorgeous, gorgeous color from uh, Christy of Yarn Cafe Creations. And I just did a standard cuff down vanilla sock. So I have a two by two ribbing, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, and then I kitchenered the toe closed um, yesterday morning. I actually, I finished these third, yeah, Thursday night, um, but I wasn't quite up to the Kitchener um, process, which I don't mind, honestly. I, I don't mind Kitchenering at all. Um, it's actually kind of fun for me, um, but I do know that there are quite a few people out there that dislike doing the Kitchener stitch, um, but I just, I was ready for bed and so I figured I would save it for um, morning. So I actually wrapped these up yesterday morning. I weaved in all my ends. It's not blocked yet. I'm going to wait for its mate to be done and then I'll block them together. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. I love this color. Um, I don't have the cake with me. It is upstairs in a bag that I didn't bring down with me, um, but I've shown it before. And I just love how it's almost like micro stripes, but not really. Um, but you do have all these beautiful oranges and blues and greens with the background of this kind of brownie gray. And I just, I really love it. I'm really happy um, with the base. This is her biscotti base. And I just, it's so scrumptious. Um, and I tried it on already. It definitely fits. I love it. It's going to be so warm come winter time. Again, 98 degrees outside, so these will probably not get worn um, anytime soon, but that's okay. Um, which gives me lots of time to finish the other one, right? So that is my half object. Hooray! I'm so excited that it's off the needles. Um, it went fairly fast, it feels like, but again, just a vanilla sock. I took it everywhere with me. I worked on it while watching TV, things like that, so it really flew. That's all I have as far as finished objects go, um, but I am getting fairly close on a couple things, so I'm really, like I said, I'm really trying to focus and crank through all the things that I have on my needles. Also Stash Dash is happening, um, and this is my first year participating in that, 
Um, I will leave links to Stash Dash in the show notes, um, as well as a link to a blog post that I have on my website where I kind of run down my plans and goals for Stash Dash. Um, all the things that I have on the needles that I would like to finish up, and uh, I'm keeping track of my meterage there. So um, I did not weigh that sock. Um, I need, I don't know if I don't know if one sock can count towards stash dash or if you have to have a full pair. So I'll have to go back and read the rules. Um, but I think I'm like just over 600 and some meters um, because I counted my impressionist MCAL shawl, which I finished after the cutoff. Um, I feel like that one was a little bit sneaking it in there. So um, I may not include that in my final, final, we'll see. I feel a little bad about it because it was like almost done. Um, but, so yeah, I'm just over 600 some. Um, I have some spinning that I'm going to ply up and finish, which I will talk about later that will count towards the meterage, um, as well as all of my other whips. <laughs> so I have, I don't have an actual set number goal yet for what I'm shooting for. Um, I still have to do some calculations and math um, to figure out kind of where I think I might be by August. I think end of August is when Stash Dash ends. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent. It's down below, so um, you guys can check that out. Uh, moving into whips. First, I want to show you my Scout Sock project. And it is living in my Luna Pie Designs pineapple bag with my adorable Leon Alexander pin and my Grocery Girls pin. Because they're both... So sparkly and they look fantastic on this bag. First I will show you the yarn quick and I am sorry it is kind of a mess because I think I talked last week about how I just always have like yarn barf messes in my bags. I don't know if you guys have any tips on how to keep things not messy in there please let me know. <laughs> I always pull things out and I end up with like all this gobbledygook whatever. Anyway, uh, I am Knitting Scout out of the Cozy Knitters Woodland Realms, which was January 2017 Yarn of the Month colorway, um, and this has been sitting in my stash for a long time, so I am glad that I finally am able to use it. It is a self-striping yarn. If you are um, familiar with Christina's yarn, they are all self-striping and beautiful, and it came with this mini... Um, which I will probably use for the heels, maybe cuffs, we'll see. Um, but just a matching brown. And here is my progress so far. So I think last time I showed you, I was like just into this first brown stripe, so you really couldn't even see much of the pattern. Um, I'll move that little guy for a minute. Um, so yeah, I am just a couple of repeats in, um, but I am loving it so far. I am knitting these on a U.S. size 2 um, Xiaogu red lace because I had twos laying around and I think with the lace it'll just give it, um, it'll open it up a bit more. I'm a rather tight knitter um, and when I do lace and cables like that I like to um, bump up just a bit on needle size so I'm not breaking my fingers um, trying to get in to all of the stitches to, to work them. So. I'm trying, that's one of my goals, you guys, is to loosen up my knitting a bit because I am a very tight knitter. Um, I'll stick my hand in here and see if that helps with the patterning at all. So you can kind of see it opening up there. Um, it's going to be so pretty. So she's got this garter ridge kind of in the middle, and then around the sides, there's this, this beautiful like cabling. And I just I really really like it. I'm having so much fun so far. I think this yarn is perfect for it. Um, yeah, I I really need to put um, some more dents into it. Um, I need to get a bit further because I have fallen behind. I was trying to wrap up the other um, half object you saw and then I had another cast on. <laughs> but these will be getting much attention through the month of June because I would like to keep up with my own cow if possible. Um, and of course I have my adorable progress keeper from Hannah who is the corner of craft. It's my little coffee mug, my little pink mug. 
it's hanging out and keeping track of my progress on here. So it, it may get moved to another project. We'll see. I may just have to buy a new one, buy another one. Who knows? Looking at you, Hannah. Wink, wink. Um, but yeah, I just, it's the perfect little progress keeper and it's so light um, and it just adds such a bit of fun to the project. So um, yeah, that is Scout. And I don't know, hopefully you guys can see the bottom, of course, is just uh, vanilla stockinette um, because you wouldn't want to walk on cabling. Um, we can see the stripe repeat very well, of course. Um, so it's just beautiful. It's brown and deep purple and then a um, undyed color. I think it's undyed, just a white stripe. And then this really pretty green and then she's got a stripe of um, speckling in there too that pulls in all the other colors of the stripes. So I'm really enjoying the way this is working up. Um, and the lace, <clears throat> the patterning plus the stripes is just making this go so quickly. It's kind of one of those projects that you get going and you don't want to stop because you want to see what happens next. <clears throat> so that is Scout. The next couple things I have to share with you are new cast-ons. <laughs> I am my own worst enemy, you guys. Um, to be fair, one of them was definitely planned. The other one just kind of happened, and I'm glad it did, though. So. Um, a lot of my other things I did knit on my Zweig just a bit, um, but not enough to write home about or show you. I feel like now that I'm at the body, you guys probably don't want to watch my like half inch increments as I work my way down the body. So I'll probably hold off from showing the Zweig on the podcast until maybe I'm halfway through the body. I feel like I have a good chunk of progress to share with you guys. Otherwise, um, there might not be much interesting for you guys to see. You might not even notice each time I show you that anything's different. Um, and I definitely, definitely want to finish up my expiration station in the next couple weeks. That's going to be a goal of mine. Um, it's like so close. I'm about 95% of the way done. I just need to put my foot down and focus on it. Um, that is one that has not made an appearance on the podcast in quite some time. It has definitely been at the back of the bus um, for all these new cast-ons that just keep shoving it down the way. So <clears throat> I will get there. Um, I definitely, I want to get it done. I want to be able to count it in stash dash. Um, and I just, I want to, I want to finally finish it, you guys. Um, so let me get to the new things. All right, first up in my bag by Brianna Lentz. Um, I showed you last week my swatch for the Tanya, and I'm happy to say that I started. Um, the Tanya is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Networks, and she's also the creator of the Zweig, um, and she has loads of gorgeous patterns. Um, I think once you start one, you're kind of sucked into all of them because they are so fantastic. So I see many uh, Boylan Networks projects in my future. Um, but I've really been wanting to cast on the Tanya for quite some time. So this is the yarn I am using and it is Lofty Loops Yarns in the Lofty MCN base. So it is Merino Cashmere and Nylon Superwash Merino. Um, and this is in my LYS Day 2018 exclusive colorway. This colorway was exclusive to Imagine It Yarn Shop in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, unfortunately, I am not, <clears throat> it was a one-time thing and it was exclusive. I'm not dying this anymore. Um, so apologies in advance if you see it and fall in love with it. <clears throat> um, this is, this is it guys. So. Um, here it is in the stain form. So really pretty, almost tealy blues, um, and pops of speckling all over. I don't have much to show you, um, because I just cast it on, but it goes very quickly. Holy yarn mess. What, what even is this? Ignore that. <laughs> um, and then I have all my tails. So this is all I have so far. I am one full repeat into the lace 
portion of the hem. And you guys are not even going to be able to see anything because I can hardly see anything. Um, that's really looking at the back. But um, it's so quick um, and it's, it's so easy to memorize um, that I just have to barely look at the paper and then I'm off zooming through the rounds. So um, I love it. I'm so happy that I finally cast it on. I am knitting the medium size. Um, I think I'm somewhere probably between a medium and a large. Um, however, I'm afraid that if I knit the large, it's going to be way too big and baggy. So I'm going to go with the medium um, and kind of see where I'm at after I do the lace portion as I'm starting up the body. Um, I think it's going to be okay. I do think I'm going to have to go up to a large or an extra large for the sleeves though because I want I don't want fitted sleeves. I want them to be a bit baggier. Um, so that's my plan. We'll see. <laughs> uh, but I, I am thoroughly enjoying it and I love the color that I'm working with. So I think it's going to be a really, really beautiful top. And I think I plan on knitting mine a bit longer. The, the picture on the front does not, um, it's very cut off -y and it goes like to belly button-ish. I mean, it's definitely cuts off above the waist. Um, and seeing as how I'm in my 30s and I can't pull off that kind of look anymore. I definitely did back in the day. Um, but you know, beer and kids and things. <laughs> I think I'm going to knit mine a bit longer so it covers a bit of the belly and the hips. Um, but I enjoy longer shirts anyway. Um, I like being able to throw them on, um, you know, over a pair of leggings or some skinny jeans or something like that. So, um, that's the plan. We will see how it goes. Um, but for now I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm so happy I cast it on and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I have a feeling there's going to be quite the, the honeymoon phase with this one. Um, because last night I just, I didn't want to stop. I was knitting on it while my husband was watching the NBA Finals. Um, congrats, Golden State. I feel like as uh, the wife of a super fan, I have to at least give them a shout out. So um, that happened, but I was knitting away on my Tanya and uh, only looking up every now and again. <laughs> but I am glad basketball's over. Tangent. Um, so yeah, that's my Tanya. Um, again, there's a project page on Ravelry if you want more information or if you want to see what my measurements are. I did take measurements for this um, and I swatched for this. So all of that info is down in the details box um, on the Ravelry page. Um, if you kind of want to see, if I don't know, see what my measurements are and kind of knowing the size I'm going with. I don't, I, I was looking through finished um, finished projects for the Tanya and kind of trying to judge like based on my body size and measurements and things like that and the size that they were knitting trying to kind of see if anyone was a similar build to me and kind of see what they went with um, so I found that really helpful so um, crossing my fingers and hoping for the best you guys <laughs> um, oh I should also mention I am knitting these on I'm going with a size six. I'm doing the Chiaogu uh, four four millimeter needle. So it is a US size six. And I don't know if you can tell, but I treated myself and this will come in uh, stash enhancements later. Um, but I finally bit the bullet and purchased myself an interchangeable set because with the amount of single needles I've purchased, like, I could have bought so many interchangeables over and over again. <laughs> so I was kind of like, it's happening, let's do this. I, I need an interchangeable. And I love Chiaogu. Um, Chiaogu has my heart 100%. So glad I did that. But more again in stash enhancement. Um, I don't want to jump ahead of myself too much. All right, last work in progress I'm going to share with you guys today is a brand new cast on, like I mentioned. And I am totally going to point fingers and blame Kay of the Crazy Sock Lady and her podcast because she does something called, uh, or she started something called Scrappy Sundays. And that is essentially where you set Sundays aside to only work on your scrappy projects because I think 
the majority of us have like a scrappy blanket on the go at least, or maybe you're doing scrappy socks or things like that. And I find personally, I don't pay a lot of attention to my scrappy projects. I'm always, like I said, in that honeymoon phase with other things that I am just giving all my attention to. So I really appreciate the fact that she has been like, we're gonna knit on our scrappy projects on Sundays. So I've totally adopted that mind frame um, and I'm rather enjoying it. Um, I've definitely got much more done these last however many couple months maybe of uh, Sunday scrappy knitting. So um, I did last Sunday I think it was. I saw her Instagram post. She is knitting a Bits and Bobs um, and that is from the Bakery Bears, I believe, um, but a Bits and Bobs blanket, and I have fought the urge to cast on another one because I am knitting a cozy memory blanket, a scrappy granny stripe blanket, crochet blanket, um, so I'm like, I don't need a third scrappy blanket, especially since the other two have, like, this much done. They're blanket snakes, um, or really thin scarves. <laughs> um, so I'm like, I don't need another blanket, but it's so pretty, and I saw her post, and I did it. Um, I went to Ravelry, and I purchased the pattern before I even knew it was happening, um, and cast on with reckless abandon like I do. So I guess I'll stop talking about it and just show you. And <clears throat> funnily enough, this is all hanging out in this fantastic bag that I purchased at ABC stores in Las Vegas because when you're in Vegas and you have to tote crap up and down the strip, you want a tote. Um, also, these are adorable. I got one of these the first time I went to Vegas and gifted it to my daughter. Um, and then we went back the second time and I bought, <laughs> I bought another one for myself. So it's just... Uh, you know, like one of those tote bags like you get from the stores or whatever, but it's from Vegas and it's pink, so I love it. Um, and the only reasoning behind using this is because it's large, um, so it's going to hold a blanket, and um, I just keep tossing all my remnants in here, so I've got a whole bunch of like remnant balls of yarn hanging out in here, um, example. So uh, I just keep tossing them in. Yeah, seeing where we go. I'm um, pulling one out at random. Ugh, yarn barf, guys. Yarn mess. What? Get it together. I should really prep these things before I pull them out of the bag so I don't look like a hot mess every time I try to show you something. Um, but here, as you can tell, I cast it on last Sunday and could not stop. Um, but this is my Bits and Bobs blanket so far. I'm using all my leftovers, all my scraps, and I have a ton of minis. This bowl is just a portion of my minis. Um, these minis are from people have sent them to me um, during Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted. I've asked for minis or remnants because I really wanted to focus on uh, my scrappy projects this year, so everyone Lots of people have so graciously gifted me a whole bunch of minis. A lot of these are, um, like this is Lofty Loops Yarns. This is from my Summertide shawl, so that's in there. Um, so some of them are unnamed. Some of them I'm never going to know where they came from or what they are. Um, but the things that I, I do know, I'll probably try to keep a running list um, in the Ravelry project page. But... I may just give up on that because, like I said, some of them are gifted so I have zero clue where they came from or who the dyer was or what the colorway name is, um, so we'll, we'll see. But my thought process, I'm sorry guys, I'm all over the place off on tangents. My thought progress for this was um, I want to use all scraps so I didn't want to go out and buy the yarn for the background color because this is knit holding two fingering weight yarns together. You have one solid color that kind of runs throughout, and then the second color is all of your scraps and minis. Um, so it's almost like a marled look throughout. Um, but I didn't want to run out and have to go get brand new yarn just to have the background color. I wanted to use all scraps. 
So I think I'm going to go with the background color being all of my gray scraps or kind of silvery gray colored scraps to kind of keep some continuity. Um, and then the foreground color will be all the random minis and things. I started with um, the gray or silver is High Sparrow from Wolfiend and I knit a pair of socks out of that last year. Um, so I used up the rest of that and it's just a really pretty silvery gray um, with some rusty colors in it. So super pretty. Um, and then when I ran out of that, I had, it's not really a scrap, but this was one of the, uh, it's Cascade Heritage Solid in gray charcoal. I don't remember what the name of it is. Um, I, I bought this for my Shu Shui shrug um, and ended up not using it. Um, so it's just been hanging out in stash. So I thought this would make a really nice background to continue with. Um, and I did have a bit left over from another project that I started. So um, I'm going to continue using that for the gray throughout. Um, and then we'll see what happens when I run out of that. But for now, that's the plan. Um, the bottom teal color is a Cascade Heritage Solid. Um, it is leftovers from my Grocery Girl shawl or the girl from the Grocery Girl shawl. Um, the middle teal color is Lofty Loops Yarns Mama Nuka that was left over from my Oracle shawl. And then this top here <clears throat> that I'm working through now is Madeline Tosh and Tosh Merino Light in the Mandala colorway and this was also left over from my girl from the grocery store. So I kind of have like a blue green theme going on. I don't know I'm I don't think I intentionally planned it that way, but it is kind of fun. Um, so I might see if I can just kind of slowly gradiate towards other colors and kind of keep similar colors together. Um, but yeah, for right now, I am so enjoying it. It looks like brioche. It's not brioche. It is brioche without all of the pearl rows <laughs> or needing to remember um, which side you're on. Um, so I'm really liking that. Um, it is, I think it's, there's a name for it. I don't remember. Um, but I'm really enjoying it and it's so squishy and it's going to make a fantastic blanket one of these days. So <laughs> thank you Kay for making that little bug bite me. Um, I'm so happy that I cast it on and I'm super addicted to it and I'm really excited that tomorrow's Sunday so I can just put a huge dent into it. Um, I do think this is not set in stone yet and I feel a little sad even mentioning it, but I think I may frog my cozy memories. Um, I think I may frog the cozy memories and then put them into this blanket. Um, and I think someday down the road I want to recast on for the cozy memories, um, or the coziest memory. It's by Kemper Ray, um, or Raybot. Um, I enjoy it. I just, I think my squares, I did like a 21 or 22 stitch um, square and they're just so tiny. So I think, I think maybe one day I want to redo it, but I want the squares to be larger. But again, that's future knitting. Um, so yeah, I think I might frog. That is all I have for you as far as works in progress go, or at least the ones that I'm going to share with you guys this week. Um, I have those three projects um, are taking up the majority of um, my knitting time. I've kind of been bouncing back and forth between those three now that I've cast off uh, that um, there's room for everyone's sock. So um, I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to cast on uh, for the second one, but probably around the time when I am feeling like I need another vanilla sock on the go, um, I'll just throw that on the needles. I do have some spinning to share with you guys. So that's all for the knitting portion of the podcast. Let's jump right into spinning. I have a completed bobbin um, from an art bat from Sheena, who is casual fashion queen. And this is in, it has no name. Um, I shared it last week or the week before, I believe, in fat form. Um, but this is just a fun art bat she made up and it is 1.8 ounces and it is super fine merino, viscose, Tessa silk, and Firestar. Um, and then just these incredible blues and purples. Um, so stinking pretty. 
Let me see if I can put, I don't know if that helps you guys see the colors at all. Um, but the fire star in there is just like, it's fire guys. Like it is just lighting this thing up. So super excited to have this done because it is only 1.8 ounces. Um, I am spinning another two ounces of just these, um, I just bought this from my local yarn shop and I think she said, is it Millen's? Is that what it's called? Um, but it's just undyed, um, undyed top. So I think I've spun about just a, mm, about half of it so far. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's just merino. Um, there's nothing special about it. I don't even think I have the tag anymore. I just bought a giant bag um, when I wanted to play around with kind of dyeing some of it and just practice spinning with. But it's it's drafting really great um, and I'm able to spin it really fine. So I think the plan is to spin this half up and then ply it together with um, Casual Fashion Queens that I have named it unicorn hair um, because as I was spinning it that's what it reminded me of because it is so blue and purple and sparkly and gorgeous. Um, so that's the plan. Again I'm a spinning newbie so I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing. Um, so I'm hoping that by applying them together it still keeps the gorgeousness that is um, what is you know the bat. Um, I also was tempted to try to do a three ply, but I think I'm just going to stick to a two ply this time around. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys have ideas of where I could go with this and what I could do. Definitely leave them below. Um, I would love to hear from, you know, more experienced spinners um, that kind of know what they're talking about and what they're doing because I am just faking it till I make it all the way through. Um, this is a bobbin from my Ashford Kiwi 2 that I own. I just recently bought a couple months ago. Um, yeah, I'm really, really getting in tune um, with, with my Kiwi and I love it. I'm so happy I purchased that wheel. Um, buying a wheel is a big deal and there are so many and there's so many options and I just... The Kiwi was kind of always drawing me in, um, and it is just a fantastic starter wheel. I love it so much. Um, no complaints. So, that is, that's my spinning I have to share. Sen <sighs> Fluff. Since we're talking spinning, I wanted to mention that uh, a few days ago I received my very first Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club kit box thing. Um, and I was super excited. I, I, I purchased my spinning wheel through Paradise Fibers and um, if you guys are familiar at all you get Paradise points for the purchases. So of course spinning a wheel and getting those points was fantastic. Um, so I went ahead and purchased some more fiber from them, a couple accessories and things like that for the wheel. Um, and then I also subscribed to their Fiber of the Month Club because as a new spinner, I want to have all of the fiber, and I want to make sure I'm continuing to get fiber um, as I'm working through my bats and things that I've purchased um, recently. So yeah, that was really fun. I am super excited about it. I am absolutely in love with it. If you guys want to check it out, um, I will leave a link up here and in the description box below um, to my unboxing video. So as soon as I got it in the mail, I flipped out. I came, I set everything up uh, to podcast, and I unboxed it and opened it all up on camera um, so I could share that excitement with you all. So if you haven't watched it yet, I'll leave a link. Um, I don't want to share what came in the box because spoilers, so if you guys are watching this and you're getting the box and you haven't received it yet, I don't want to just throw them at you. Um, if you don't care about spoilers or if you've already received yours, then you can go... Um, you know, make it a manual process to click on that uh, other video and then I won't feel so bad about uh, spoiling it for you guys. So um, definitely check that out if you're interested. It came with a two different types of fibers, really gorgeous. Um, so excited to use it and some other goodies. So 
uh, give it a look if you're interested and I'm sure in the next coming weeks you will see some of that fiber in progress because I can't wait to get it on the wheel. So as soon as I'm done pulling up the bat from Casual Fashion Queen and getting that all finished, I am going to um, start working through through that fiber. So really exciting. Um, that kind of led us straight into stash acquisitions because I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that. Um, but again, I'm not going to show it off because I have an unboxing video. Um, in that video, I kind of sit down, you see me unbox it, and then I sit down and I kind of go through each thing one by one and give you my thoughts. As we head into stash acquisitions or stash enhancements or wool piggery or whatever it is that you want to call it, um, I just have a few things. I got fluff all over now. I just have a few things that I want to share with you guys. This will likely be the end of my stash acquisitions for just a little while. Um, like I said, I put myself on a lockdown, so uh, <laughs> no more purchasing of things for the month of June if I can stand it. So as I mentioned before, I purchased a interchangeable kit or set from uh, Chiaogu. This is the small set. Um, and I got the 4 inch tips, um, <clears throat> so you'll see my 6's are missing because they're currently on my Tanya, um, but it is a US size 2 through 8 um, in the small set. I have a, my little darning needle. I am so happy that I purchased this, you guys, um, just knowing that I have the ability to pick up um, the needle size that I need and not worry about them being on another project or maybe it's a project where you're switching um, so you maybe you're knitting the ribbing in a smaller size and then the body in a bigger size just knowing that like all I have to do is screw off the tips and put the new ones on and I don't have to worry about taking anything on or off the needles like that's super exciting to me <laughs> um, and again I love Love Chiaogu. Um, they are my number one all-time favorite uh, needle. And I was a bit worried about uh, the four the four inch tips, but to be honest, I haven't even really noticed uh, with my Tanya. So it's not bothering me. I have small hands. Um, so it is, it is what it is, I guess. Um, I also really enjoy that they leave room um, if you want to expand your kit. Um, and I know that there are quite a few local yarn shops and things like that that will sell the tips and cables separately. So that's really nice to know. Um, I don't hardly ever use any of the bigger sizes anymore. Um, if anything, I... I mean, I don't know that I'm ever going to need these. I'm never going to, I mean, I'm not going to say never because there's, there's a good chance that I might someday. Um, but I think if I want to get the, any smaller than a two, I think I have to buy the mini, the mini interchangeable kit. Um, and if that's the case, the cables don't match. So the joins um, are not the same size. So that would be a whole separate kit by itself. Um, but I do like the fact that I can go get, you know, an extra pair of fives or an extra pair of sixes or threes or whatever it is that I use the majority of the time. Um, I can go get extras and then stick them in here and um, that'll be all there for me. Um, it came with a cute little, this cute little tool um, for measuring needle size and you can do, you know, it's got a ruler on there for gauge. Um, it also came with some stitch markers, which are really cute. It came with an extender and these end caps and of course the T-pins to tighten them on. And then it came with, um, some cable sets. So it came with two 8-inch cables, one 14-inch cable, and one 22-inch cable. And then I went... And purchased uh, a couple more 22 inches because I feel like I would use those the majority of the time if I'm magic looping or working on a garment. Um, so that's super exciting. Really excited for it. Um, on my Tanya I have joined a 
22 inch and a 8 inch to make a 30 inch cable. Um, plus then I have the two tips which makes it a total of, oh math in the morning, 38 inches uh, I think is what I have on my Tania. So I really like the, um, the way that you can kind of extend those if needed or shorten them if needed. So uh, that would have came in really handy when I was um, when I was knitting on my Oracle shawl because I remember switching needles so constantly from that because you start in the middle and then you work your way out. So there came a point where you get out here where it's quote, you know, a bit too big for like magic loop, but then so I put like a 16 inch cord or needle in and then I had to work with that and it was all scrunched up until I could finally like graduate. So this is super exciting. I should have done this years ago, um, but I'm glad I have it now. So. Yay! Uh, the next thing that I want to share with you um, is a swap list swap that I joined. Um, this was posted by Kay, who is the crazy sock lady and happy scrappy life. Um, it was, she had a couple swap list swaps open in her Ravelry group and I've never done a swap list swap before so I wanted to jump in and check out what that was all about. I went ahead and jumped on board. Um, and these are from the Polka Dot Creeps. Polka Dot Creek. I'm sorry. Not the Polka Dot Creep. <laughs> oh man. Polka Dot Creek. If you are unfamiliar with what a swap list swap is, it is essentially that you pay for the minis um, so you don't swap anything but cash and then the minis get sent out to you. Um, so this arrived much faster than I was anticipating. Um, I think it arrived yesterday and I wasn't expecting it until almost the middle of June. So that's super awesome um, because I'm already trying to pick out which ones that I want to add uh, to the blanket next. Um, but uh, the only downside, and it's not even really a downside, it's just kind of something to note when you're doing a swapless swap, um, all of the colorways are printed down here on this little sticker, um, but they're not individually marked. So you kind of have to do a little guessing game um, to figure out which one um, goes with which name, but I was kind of having fun with that yesterday trying to figure it out. For example, I know that that one is most definitely probably Grello, um, and I'm guessing that one is newspaper. Um, so it was really fun to kind of go through and see if I could figure out which ones were which. Um, that one's probably Pumpkin Patch, for example. Um, if you end up falling in love with one, I'm sure all you have to do is reach out to the dyer and ask them. They would probably be happy um, to let you know which one was which or what the name was or how you could get a hold of a full size if you want to. So that is really fun. Um, there are lots of swaps, uh, swapless swaps in a lot of Ravelry groups. I definitely am interested in seeing what it would take um, for me to not only host a swapless swap in my Ravelry group, but I would also um, potentially like to be some of the, uh, or be a yarn dyer for the swapless swap. So um, that's really fun. That's something I'm gonna reach out uh, to Happy Scrappy Life about probably in a few months here um, if things slow down a bit. Um, but if looks like um, Happy Scrappy Life has an Etsy shop um, with ready to ship mini skeins, I think that there are links um, to kind of a list of all of the swap list swaps that are going on, kind of a master list, if you will. Um, so it's definitely something to look into uh, if you guys are interested in joining a swap list swap. So that's super exciting. Like I said, I'm really excited to get those. Uh, Get those into the blanket so and I think that's really special and uh, it's a yarn dyer that's new to me so that's even better. Second to last thing I want to share uh, with you for stash enhancements um, is this beautiful potluck um, colorway from uh, Hedgehog Fibers in the Skinny Singles and uh, I got this from Skein Cocaine's um, what do you call it, uh, auction. So she does, she holds Instagram auctions um, where she posts pictures of what's up for auction and how many there are and then you can comment on it and say sold and then the amount uh, that you want um, 
and then you'll get an invoice and she'll ship it out to you. So I saw these and again, this was on the 31st, I looked, um, I saw these and being that it's a potluck, um, which means it's kind of a one of a kind, one and done type deal, um, I really wanted to get my hands on this colorway. So um, it is beautiful. So pretty with the neon pinks and purples and this bright teal like I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet it's kind of one of those again where I just purchase it because it's pretty and I have zero plans for it um, but I'm really excited so definitely grab that um, that is going to be the last of the yarn coming into this house um, uh, until I let myself off of the yarn band um, and then there's one other thing that I want to share with you quickly and then we will move on to the next segment. I have a very sweet friend on Instagram who is Sweet Amy. Hi Amy! Um, she has uh, sent me some goodies in the past. I believe she was one of the ones that attributed to my giant uh, mini bowl. Um, giant mini bowl. Um, over... Uh, last Christmas for Get Your Yarn Wishes Granted, and um, she's just been a really awesome person to chat with on Instagram, so it's always fun to see what she's making next, um, and she reached out a while back and wanted to know if I'd be interested in doing a swap, so I told her that yes I would, I'm always down for swaps, and so I sent her off uh, a skein of yarn with a matching mini for another pair of socks, and she sent me this adorable sheep bag. So cute. Look at the little black sheep, or little brown sheep. Aren't they just the cutest? Um, this is a perfect sock size bag. She did say, I believe, that she's not planning on making these and selling them. She just wanted to whip some up just for fun. Um, however, if she does intend to sell these in the future, um, I will be interested and I will definitely let you guys know. Um, and inside the bag she stuffed in some goodies because she's so sweet. Um, so there's some teas in here and it's so funny because in my swap package I sent her some of the same tea. <laughs> so great minds think alike. Um, so yeah with the Tazo tea. Um, Literally all three of these are like my favorites. I just, they're the uh, dessert delights and I go through these like crazy. So thank you, Amy. Um, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I sent her to. Um, and then there's also this Oprah Cinnamon Chai from Tivana. So I'm really interested in seeing what that's all about. Um, as well as this bag which is Super Fruit from Tea Pig, which is a new uh, to me tea company, and um, I love anything fruity, so it smells yummy. So I'm excited to try those out. Um, and then, if, as if the bag and the tea wasn't enough, she also stuck in uh, some more minis. So thank you so much, Amy. Um, you are too sweet. Um, a lot of these are new to me. There's one that is, uh, whew, I have hair all over. Zaw Wools. Um, that's brand new to me, but this is Date Night. And then Vivid Yarn in Lemonade Stand. And T and H Fiberworks in Lichen. Lichen? Lichen? <laughs> no, thank you. I ever know how to pronounce that word. Uh, but yeah, so definitely excited to have more minis. Actually, I'm going to toss these in the mini bowl. <laughs> so this will be a great sock size uh, project bag to kind of tote along with me when I uh, have a sock on the go. So thanks again, Amy. You are seriously too sweet. Um, thanks for reaching out for me for a swap. Um, like I mentioned, I am always down for a swap. Uh, they have little snaps here for the clothes. That is all I have for you as far as stash enhancements or acquisitions go. So I'm going to move right along into shop news. 
so as previously mentioned, I own Lofty Loops Yarns, and you can find all of that hand-dyed yarn at LoftyLoopsYarns.com. Um, and I have, I have kind of a question to you guys. Um, and I did put a poll up on my Instagram stories yesterday, but I am curious. Do you guys prefer doing um, or when dyers have uh, scheduled updates? So, for example, previously I was saying that all of my updates happen Saturday, 10 a.m. Central, and that's that. Or do you guys prefer if they just go up into the shop as soon as they're ready and there is no big announcement or big time and day to like be prepared for? You just can just kind of um, browse whenever you feel like it. Um, I kind of go both ways. Um, I think that it depends a lot on um, how big or um, how... Uh, popular the dyer is, if that makes any sense. So, for example, I'm going to pick on Kristen uh, with Mullen Vine Yarns. Um, I adore her, and I adore her yarn, um, which I have plenty of. I hoard it away because I'm like, ah, I get it, and then I don't want to use it. <laughs> um, but, so for example, she has very scheduled updates, um, and she lets everyone know ahead of time, and then it's kind of like a free-for-all get it if you can type situation where um, people are getting cart jacked or um, you know it's kind of like a mad rush. I've definitely purchased things uh, before in the past where I add one skein to my cart, check out, and then I go back and I add another skein to my cart and check out just for fear of like going back for that second one. I might, while I'm getting the second one, I might lose the first one. So while I adore Kristen and I am like so blown away by how popular she is. She is fantastic. It's with all good reason. Um, it kind of gives me a bit of anxiety being a shopper, um, trying to get my hands on things where the dyer is so popular that they sell out as soon as they go up. Um, that being said, I am not that way. Um, Lofty Loops Yarns uh, is definitely making a name for itself, which is fantastic. Um, and I thank you all that have purchased from me in the past. Um, but when I update the shop, they do not sell out like hotcakes. They stick around and hang out for quite a bit of time, which is fine. Um, I like having this, the shop stocked, and whenever someone happens to visit my site, there is always things in stock um, for them to look at. So, all that being said, my question is, I was doing scheduled updates more for peace of mind for me to keep myself on track and on schedule, but now that it's summertime and I am finding myself having just a little bit more freedom because I'm not running kids to and from school and dealing with school things after school and blah 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 blah, I'm just kind of dying whenever I, whenever the inspiration strikes, um, whenever I have a bit of free time to get into the dye studio or like set, you know, a half day aside and things like that. So. I've been really excited recently by the things that I'm coming up with in the new colorways, and I really hate that they just kind of sit around and wait for Saturday. Like, I want to put them in the shop and share them. Um, so, gosh, all of that long-winded blah um, uh, is really, really me asking you guys if you guys are okay with me just adding uh, skeins to the shop as they're dry and labeled and ready to ship. Or do you prefer that I hold them all to the side and then list them all Saturday mornings at 10? Um, it's really kind of a toss up for me. Um, I almost think that I like the just doing it as they're ready um, approach is better for the end user um, because as they are dry and scanned up and labeled and things like that, I take photos and then I share those photos on Instagram. And I feel a little bit bad every time I share a photo and say, here's this brand new colorway that I super love, but it won't be available until next Saturday. I want to be able to say, here's this brand new color that I love, it's ready for you guys now. So as you're seeing it on Instagram or on Facebook or what have you, you have the opportunity right then and there to just head to the shop and grab it for yourself. Um, I am very much an instant gratification person. Um, there are definitely people out there that I, um, I'll make a note of their updates in my calendar, set an invite for, 
um, for a calendar event, whatever, um, and then it reminds me like 15 minutes before so I can get ready for it. I definitely do that. But on the other hand, I'm also one of those people, like in the Skein Cocaine um, auction, where I see it and I want it and I want it now. Um, so again, I could go either way. It's really up to you guys. Um, According to my poll, um, I think the majority, like 90% of the people, said that they just want them added when they're done and ready. Um, don't wait for, um, don't wait for a, a day to update them all at once. So I think I'm going to try that at least maybe for the next few weeks. Um, again, there's going to be light updates because I have a something big planned at the end of the month. Um, so there'll probably be light updates until then. So this might work out even better because um, I feel bad saying there's a big shop update on Saturday and then I throw like three things in the shop. <laughs> so maybe for the next few weeks um, I'll just kind of see how it goes and just add things. And again, um, I'll post on Instagram when they're up and ready for you guys to let you know. Um, as well as my newsletter, I will probably continue sending that out once a week. And that will just include all of the new things that either went into the shop or are headed to the shop soon. Um, so you guys are kind of keeping that circulation going um, and knowing what's new. Um, I don't want to send out a newsletter every time I add something to the shop throughout the week because that would just be spammy and annoying and no one wants that. Um, <laughs> so I'll probably just stick to the once a week uh, newsletter. And you can sign up for that down below in the description box. Or you can sign up for that uh, on my website if you hit the home page and you scroll down to the towards the bottom there is a sign up form uh, for you guys to submit your email and uh, get on that list so whew, that was a lot of talking I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I snuck into the shop this past week all right first step gonna get this light crinkle out of the way for you guys so uh, apologies in advance but I've already packaged it up because it is a shawl kit and I just wanted it neat and packaged and ready to go for when it's purchased. I only have one of these. This is the only one right now. Um, so if you are wanting it or it strikes your fancy, um, please run over to the shop and grab it. Because after this is gone, I'm not entirely sure when there will be more. So it's kind of an experiment. Um, and I'm sorry about the crinkle. Uh, but this is a Birds of a Feather kit um, in Wisteria Lane. So Wisteria Lane is a really gorgeous uh, lavender lilac green colorway, very variegated. Um, I've showed it before. There's tons of speckles. This is, uh, you get two skeins of Lofty Sock, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, um, and one skein of my Lofty Mohair Silk, which is a kid mohair silk blend in a lace weight. Um, so these all came out of the same... Um, batch so they were all dyed together um, and you can see how much differently the mohair takes the dye than uh, the superwash uh, merino does which is really fun but this would be enough yarn uh, for you to knit up a birds of a feather. I mean really there's loads of other designs uh, coming out recently or becoming more popular with mohair so um, check out Ravelry you could uh, these would be enough for maybe a top and then you could hold the mohair together with it, um, double stranded to give it some nice fluff. So you have loads of options. Um, I believe it's just called a shawl kit in the shop, um, but I do uh, mention a couple patterns that it would be good for. So um, like I said, only one in there. If you want it, go grab it because um, I'm not sure when I'm going to dye up more kits like this again. Uh, also new to the shop, and uh, some have already been purchased, so this is all I have left, but this is Grapefruit Smoothie. And this came out of a dialogue hosted by MJ, who's Cat Sandwich Fibers. Uh, she posted a beautiful photo of, uh, are they dragon? I think they're, I think they're dragon fruits. Um, I'll try to insert a photo if I remember. Um, but she just wanted to say here's the inspiration photo and anyone that wants to dye it or um, weave something or, you know, what have you, just use it as inspiration. Um, let's create something. So this is what came out of that. And these are both on Lofty Sock. Um, that's all I dyed it on for now but I did write down the recipe so it will be a repeatable colorway and these are the only two left. 
Um, and I posted on Instagram a picture of these three together. So this is Lemon Fizz on Mohair Silk, and it is just this bright, uh, almost darker neon, not like it's not highlighter yellow, um, it's got a little bit of depth and darkness to it, um, but these three together, again, would make a beautiful birds of a feather kit. Um, you don't ha I, I did not kit them up that way, so you can buy them all separately if you wish, but how pretty is that? Like, how summery would that be? Like, holy smokes. Um, I don't think I can pull off bright colors like that, but I am sure there are loads of you out there that can. So. Uh, again, Grapefruit Smoothie on Lofty Sock and Lemon Fizz um, on Mohair Silk. And going along with the Mohair Silk theme, I have Lavendaria. So just a really pretty lavender purple. Um, very pretty. It would also go well with Wisteria Lane if you don't want to have all the highly speckled variegated color. Um, if you just want a plain blue. Or that I was looking down my lap, a plain purple lavender stain. Um, so that is Lavendaria. And back by popular demand is uh, Mermaid Lagoon, and this one is on Lofty Clits, so it is uh, my silver Stellina base. So that is in the shop. A brand new to the shop. This is going to be a loophole. Um, <laughs> I threw something out a while back trying to figure out what name I could come up with or have people come up with names help me out uh, for my one-of-a-kind colorways. Things that cannot be repeated. For a while I was just calling them one-of-a-kinds, um, but that could really mean a one-of-a-kind stain. It could mean a one-of-a-kind batch. Um, things like that. So I wanted to kind of come up with a name. Uh, for example, like uh, hedgehog fibers because they're potlucks. Um, I do still name them all. I just want to have something that uh, the colorway is named, but I wanted to have something that designated that it is a one and done type thing. I did not write down the recipe for it. So uh, Cheryl of Hypnotic Yarn so lovingly came up with loopholes, which I thought was adorable. Um, so that's what we're going with for now. Um, I really like it. But this is cream or creme de menthe um, based off of the liquor, of course. Um, if you've ever had like a mint martini um, or maybe even a chocolate mint martini, um, delicious. But it is this really pretty minty green with darker greens um, and some dark brown kind of chocolatey colors. So there are a few of these on sock in the shop and a couple on DK. This is another loophole um, I did not write down the recipe for, uh, but this is antique linen, and it's just a almost robin's egg blue with a bit more teal in it and lots of speckles. So you have um, kind of this rust-colored speckle and blues and lighter blues. Um, I'm hoping that the lighting is picking it up, but I have three of these in the shop uh, right now on Lofty Sock. So, did not write down the recipe. It is non-repeatable, but it is beautiful. Oh, and this was all the way at the bottom. I have one more um, new colorway on Mohair Silk, and this is Rusted Pewter. Um, and it's just this really pretty purpley gray, um, a cooler color gray, with little blips of almost um, it's it's where the dye broke, so I didn't throw any extra dye on top. Um, it's just kind of the way the dye broke when it was dyed, but you can see these just little um, almost yellowy greenish uh, bits, but it looks a little bit like rusted metal. So this is rusted pewter, and it would make um, a perfect addition being held uh, double with with a lot of different colorways. So that is in the shop. So again, that's all I have for you as far as shop update goes. Everything that you just saw is up in the shop and ready to go. I snuck it all in uh, yesterday instead of this morning because I just could not wait to share it with you guys. Um, again, lots of new colorways and lots of mohair. So 
I think I'm going to go that route. I think I'm just going to throw things in the shop and then update you guys on Instagram. Um, if you hate that idea, let me know. Um, I can always switch back to regular updates, but my stuff is not in such high demand that if you are not at an update on time, um, you won't be missing out on anything, I promise. That's all I have for shop news. Um, I'm going to jump into the kind of just the chatter portion uh, towards the end of the podcast here where I just kind of chat about what's been going on in my life the last week um, and things that I might be really into right now. So let's see, this last week there was uh, lots of work. Work was busy. Um, not too terribly much happening um, on the, the kiddo front. They kind of had a just kind of a, a relaxing week here at home. They will be heading off to camp uh, here in a couple weeks, so they will be gone for almost an entire week. I did take that week off of work, so I plan on getting some dyeing done, but also just enjoying the silence um, of the house and probably reorganizing the office a bit and getting some projects uh, around the house done since I will be here alone uh, with my husband at work. So that'll be nice, a bit of a staycation, if you will. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be quiet while the kids are gone. It's gonna be weird um, not having them here. So, so we'll see how that goes. Um, tonight I am heading out to my niece's graduation party. She has just graduated high school, so this is the third niece now that has graduated. Um, and that's always super fun and I'm really excited to see them grow up um, and kind of find their own way as young adults so that'll be a good time and it is also worldwide knit in public day which means I will be taking my knitting with me of course um, but as soon as my husband gets home from work I think we're gonna head out um, to grab some lunch or kind of a later lunch um, and I plan on knitting wherever we go too. So, and of course wearing my yarn snob shirt. So uh, that will be, <laughs> that'll be interesting. Um, I am no stranger to knitting in public. If we go out to have a beer or something, um, I typically take a sock with me anyway. So it's gonna be so hot, um, but I wish it were cooler so we could go hang out at a park maybe. Um, I do know that there's a couple yarn shops in town that have made plans uh, for hanging out in groups, but with all of our activities that we have going on today and to get ready for, um, I just don't think I can make any of those, unfortunately. So I will be knitting in public uh, on my own, um, just uh, hopefully with tons of people worldwide. Um, we just won't be in the same location. So that's really fun. Um, I'm excited for that. And, um, Yesterday, I started watching 13 Reasons Why. Um, that has been something that has been talked about quite a bit recently in kind of my social group. Um, and I've been hesitant to start it just because I am watching so many other shows, uh, my husband and I, but I feel like some of our things are kind of starting to wind down a bit for the summer. Um, so I started that just, you know, as I was knitting away on my Tanya and, um, I really enjoy it. We're only three episodes in so far and my husband came home from work and sat down with me and he was kind of resting and um, I think the end of the first episode um, I was getting ready to shut it off to change it because I feel bad when I force him to watch uh, all the shows that I'm interested in um, even though I have to watch basketball with him. Um, but I felt bad so I was going to turn it off and as the credits were rolling he goes, I really like this show. I'm really into it. And I was like, what? Like, okay, me too. <laughs> so that's fun. It's always fun when we uh, find a show that we can both be interested in and uh, I don't have to force him to watch along like The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Although I think he's secretly a little bit into that too. He knows all of their names and he keeps up with all of the latest drama and asks about it. So um, he just won't ever admit it out loud. So 13 Reasons Why is happening. Um, I plan on watching another couple episodes of that this weekend while I get some knitting work in. Um, and oh, I started reading a new book. I think last week I talked to you guys about Dark Matter, um, which I was super obsessed with while it happened. Um, I'm bummed it's over. Um, but uh, same author, I mentioned that he has a trilogy 
turned TV show um, called Wayward Pines. So I started reading the first book of Wayward Pine, Pines, Pine, multiple Pines. <laughs> um, I started reading that first book and it's kind of one of those that I just can't stop. Again, um, same with Dark Matter. It was just like it envelopes you and it just takes over and I'm a little bummed that I did not get the audiobook because I feel like I would love listening to that while I'm knitting. Um, however, it was not available on Overdrive, so I'm just reading, which is fine because I usually I read before bed anyway. Um, but it's definitely it, it'll get you. So um, it's about a secret secret service agent who heads to this small town um, in Utah, I think Utah, to look for a couple other. Secret Service agents that went missing um, and he kind of when he gets there he's involved in a car accident and then he has some memory trouble after the accident um, and so then he's trying to navigate his way around this tiny town um, to kind of figure out what happened and um, I just kind of got into one of the like holy crap shocker parts <laughs> so now I'm really interested to see where it goes um, and I want to check out the TV show as soon as I finish this book um, yeah, I think that's all I have as far as uh, TV and books go. Um, keto life is going great. I think I am officially about two and a half weeks in. Um, I also started running on Wednesday, so my uh, beginning running group started Wednesday night. My sister-in-law is doing that with me and her two daughters, uh, my two older nieces, have joined us. So we have quite the little group running um, on Wednesday nights, so that's really fun. Um, however, my body is sore today, um, as it's been since Wednesday. I don't think it was quite ready to get back into um, that kind of movement after my surgery. It's been just over six months since I had my um, discectomy on my back um, and I believe he told me it was about six to eight months that I probably needed to wait before I could really try to get back into being that active again um, so I'm definitely taking it very slow um, I walked the majority of the second half of our run it was just like just a two mile run um, so I took it slow and I walked quite a bit on the way back and um, um, I don't know I'm just I'm gonna keep pushing but I'm not gonna push super hard I just I want to get my body get that muscle memory back um, of the running and uh, doing keto at the same time has been interesting um, because the whole purpose behind keto is to train your body to become fat adapted instead of um, glucose and carb adapted. I did a bit of research to kind of see how my body would react um, or how a body reacts um, on keto doing uh, long distance running in keto. So um, not so much like sprinting. This would be like steady pace, endurance for a long time, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to even longer beyond that. Um, and, the research I found is very interesting. So it sounds like people have a, in, like, if you were a marathoner, for instance, or you're on a long run, you know, every couple miles you have to stop and eat one of those goos, which is carb and sugary, to kind of give you that boost of energy because you run out, you, you deplete your glucose stores. Um, if you become fat adapted, then that is not a thing anymore. Um, you essentially always have stores of energy to pull from. So um, I'm kind of interested to see how this all works out um, as we go. Of course, this is all, I'm not a doctor. Um, this is all just research I do on YouTube and Googling. So uh, <laughs> uh, take it with a grain of salt. But. Yeah, that is all I think I have for you guys this week. I want to thank you guys for joining me again for episode 14 of the Lofty Loops Yarns podcast. Uh, next week there will be we'll be at episode 15, you guys. Holy moly! And uh, the sub the subscriber count keeps growing, so that is fantastic. I thank you all. I love you all. Um, 
If you are not already subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down in the corner. And if you want to get notified of when new videos come out, whether it be podcast videos or otherwise, like my unboxing or sock tutorial, um, go ahead and hit the bell and then you'll get a notification. And if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up so you can help spread the word and get this podcast out to others that may enjoy it as well, um, because the knitting community is a fantastic one. Um, and you can never have enough podcasts to enjoy. I know I have a very long list, <laughs> which is why it's so hard for me to sneak in TV shows anymore because I'm watching podcasts. Um, so anyway, enjoy your worldwide knit in public day and have a great rest of your week. Bye guys.